Well, uh, tēnā koutou katoa, uh, everybody. Uh, e mihi ana uh, ki nga mana whenua. Uh, uh, ko Meg Toko Ingoa, um, no uh, Tamaki Makoto aho <laughs> at 3 p.m. on um, on in the afternoon for me. So my brain is working a little bit slowly. Um, but uh, wonderful to be able to share a little bit about Aotearoa Justice Watch uh, with you. Um, my name's Meg, uh, I'm from Tamaki Makoto from Auckland, uh, and I'm the Executive Director of Amnesty International. Uh, and just passing over to Jordan, who's joining us as well. Kia ora koutou. my name, as Meg said, is Jordan Anderson. I am the Chair of the Board of a NGO based in Te Whanganui Atara, Called Just Speak, and um, we seek criminal justice transformation essentially. Uh, and so, really excited to be here having this corridor about Aotearoa Justice Watch with you, Meg. Awesome. So, as well as Just Speak and Amnesty International Aotearoa New Zealand, uh, which, as some of you may know, is a human rights organisation, and, and we're the uh, New Zealand section of, of Amnesty, which is a global organisation, uh, we also have worked with the Council for Civil Liberties on this project as well. Uh, but there's been a huge amount of work that's gone into Aotearoa Justice Watch behind the scenes. Um, so, perhaps uh, if we just start out sketching out a little bit bit of, of um, who's been involved in the conversations to set this up uh, and then a little bit uh, about why uh, we felt like it was needed and then finally we'll explain exactly what it is um, and we'll go and have a little look at the website so you can see what the project is and how you might be able to use it. So um, I guess from Amnesty's perspective, this uh, website came about because of lots of different collaborations that we have in this criminal justice space in New Zealand, uh, and ultimately, I guess, in trying to stop harm and create a, a better community and better future uh, for New Zealanders. And so we've done a huge amount of work with Just Speak before. They're an amazing organisation, uh, and we've done lots of work uh, behind the scenes with other organisations as well, like the Council for Civil Liberties, um, but also with organisations like PAPA um, and with different journalists. And so uh, in order to set up this space, there were a range of workshops that occurred. So Just Speak and Amnesty hosted workshops uh, in a couple of different places around New Zealand uh, with the perspectives of um, people who both had been in prison or who have worked with people who have been in prison uh, or who have had family uh, who have been in prison uh, to try and understand a little bit about uh, what might be valuable, what might be helpful, and what might be missing in the current system uh, when we're trying to campaign for justice and trying to find out about what's going on uh, for people in prisons and uh, when people experience policing. Uh, so there's been lots of different voices that have gone into this project. Uh, and the three organization, organizations that are sort of holding the project and providing the resources at this stage our Amnesty, uh, Just Speak and the Council for Civil Liberties, um, but that doesn't mean there aren't lots of other people that might be involved as we go forward um, and go on. And Jordan, from your perspective, do you want to just talk a little bit about where we're currently at with the justice space and why there might be a need for something like Aotearoa Justice Watch? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's an interesting thing uh, proposing to collect more data because as we know, as you know, the organisations that are collaborating on this project are aware, um, often the last thing we need is more problem definition in the justice space, is more research in the justice space, because for the most part, we know what the solutions are and what needs to be done, and it's just a matter of doing the thing. For this, with um, you know, the kinds of issues that we're looking to record and the experiences that we're seeking for people to have a safe uh, non-government outlet to share, there really isn't very good data on this at all. And so um, within the criminal justice system and when we start talking about uh, corrections responses, police responses and things like that, the internal mechanisms for complaints are so profoundly broken that there's really no kind of accurate um, statistical data. There's, um, I would imagine, probably a 
in the single digits of complaints even make it from a person intending to complain into the systems. And it has been interesting, uh, you know, the genesis of this project happened last year with the lockdowns of 2020, but more recently with the Department of Corrections even looking in in itself and starting to identify that its complaints processes for prisoners are profoundly flawed. Like, it's interesting to see that, you know, cogs are starting to turn within government, but it is our responsibility as community members, as collaborators within this justice space to do something about this massive problem that we did come to be aware of, particularly during that first lockdown of 2020. Um, and so this is, I think, one of the few occasions where collecting more data and, you know, providing a repository, a safe space for that is actually a really helpful thing for us. Yeah, absolutely. I think you put it really well that uh, it seems almost counterintuitive, right, to collect more data. But what we found was uh, the reports weren't enough uh, because the reports that were being done were either A, being ignored, or in some ways the way that that data was being used silenced the voices uh, of the people that were having these experiences. And I think what we saw last year were uh, a number of people and organisations wanting to do the same thing but not necessarily being linked up uh, and a number of amazing people basically speaking out or whistleblowing. So uh, from Amnesty's experience, we uh, worked on a number of issues last year that came about because people who had been in prison spoke out. Uh, so there was uh, obviously issues around excessive lockdown hours. Um, we had both family members and people who were in prison speaking out on that during COVID. Uh, but then there was also obviously the case of the Auckland Women's Correctional Facility and the amazing women there uh, that told their story and uh, spoke their truth in court. The only reason why uh, that came to light and why journalists and advocates were able to really push on that was because those wahine spoke up, but also then because the people involved in the case notified others that it was going on. Um, and that was because there was media coverage around some of the lockdown issues. So it was kind of a cascading effect. So really that recognition that people's stories are so powerful to expose systemic issues uh, became so apparent during that period of time. So I guess we have to acknowledge that this isn't there in place of some of the official complaint mechanisms or in place of the prison inspectorate or in place of the ombudsman. Uh, but this is about us being able to make uh, steps towards justice using a tool that hopefully is available for lots of different types of people. Uh, what we thought we might do is show you the tool uh, and go and have a wee look. So I'm going to share screen uh, and pull it up. And then hopefully that will enable us to look at what it actually looks like. So can you see my screen there? Yep. Awesome. So Aotearoa Justice Watch is accessible in Māori and in English. And a huge thanks uh, to the support that we got for translation uh, of the site and is a work in progress as well. So as I say, we've consulted and asked people uh, for support on what would be best for the online form. But if there's something missing, uh, do reach out and let us know. Uh, so you can go and have a look at aotearoajusticewatch.org.nz. And on the form there, it can tell you who we are. So uh, a group of independent organisations that care about justice and human rights. It tells you a little bit about the project and how it works. So we're looking to collect people's experiences and stories about policing and prisons. And it also talks to you about the privacy of your story or your information that you share. So you can share anonymously uh, and the information is stored in a way uh, that complies with the Privacy Act and our obligations under that. Uh, so the form is asking you to tell us what's happened, uh, when it happened, whereabouts in New Zealand, uh, and whether it happened to you or whether you were a witness or observer, or perhaps you might actually be a representative, an advocate, someone that works with uh, within the system yourself, uh, because we are aware that people who experience or, or see violence within the system may actually be working for a state agency as well. Uh, and we ask you for a detailed summary of what the situation is uh, that you want to let us know about or disclose. Uh, and then we ask a little bit of information about you. 
So that's the form there. Uh, we also ask for evidence. So I guess in a moment we can talk a little bit about um, disclaimers of, of what Aotearoa Justice Watch isn't. Um, but one of the reasons for us asking for evidence is just so we've got ways to verify what's actually occurring and going on uh, before we take any further action. Um, lastly, there's some informed consent pieces there. And another part of the project that I think is important to share is that we will check in with you every step of the way uh, if we were going to use your data as well. Uh, so consent is a really important part of the process for us. So um, are there any other aspects of the form that you think are important to share, Jordan? Probably the main one that I would want to emphasise is that uh, people can report anonymously. Uh, that although we've got those boxes there that you would have seen about all sorts of identifying information that we understand that not everybody that uses this form is necessarily going to be in a position where they can self-identify. Uh, if you would like to and want to keep that confidential, that is fine. And also if you are not in a position where you want to share your identity at all, we also understand and accept that. Absolutely. Yeah, I think that is absolutely really important. And um, both organisations are used to working with people uh, who do want to be kept uh, anonymous or who have um, suffered trauma as well. And I think that's important too um, to acknowledge is that some of the things that we deal with may be traumatic uh, and we aren't um, able to provide the trauma support that may be needed, but we do encourage you to get support if you need it. So on the site, you'll see that there are um, also links out if you're actually needing professional legal help or whānau su support, um, or if you do need to make a formal complaint. So obviously to the police complaints um, authority or to other bodies that may be able to progress your individual issue. So I'll stop screen sharing there uh, and uh, just check back in. So I guess, Jordan, what do we hope is going to happen by setting up? this online space for people to share their stories? Well, I think that one of the hopes is kind of what you touched on before is that the sharing of stories is such a profoundly powerful thing. And um, by collecting stories in one place, we're able to identify patterns and put on, you know, more significant pressure onto the government for change. And also, you know, potentially provide an outlet to be able to um, communicate those stories you know obviously with the permissions we discussed earlier to the public to kind of change hearts and minds and create greater understanding of the kinds of behaviors that unfortunately can and do happen within our law enforcement systems as they are today. Yeah absolutely and I think you know that's a really crucial point that you've touched on is that these are people's lives and people's experiences and stories and I think once people uh, in the general public who perhaps haven't experienced prison or haven't experienced a loved one go to prison start to hear those stories, start to understand the human um, aspect behind the statistics, it really becomes so much easier to recognise our justice system is broken and needs fixing uh, and that prisons at the moment are causing massive amounts of harm and that there's so much we can collectively do to change that. So uh, hopefully... That's something that you can be part of. Uh, if you know of someone that would like to share their story or their experience, uh, or if you're aware of a practice that's going on inside prisons or with police uh, that needs to change, then please do head to aotearoajusticewatch.org.nz uh, or you can pop on to Just Speak's website or to Amnesty's website or to the Council for Civil Liberties and get in touch with us uh, and we can redirect you if needed uh, or let you know a little bit more about the project. Uh, and really, this is just the aim of organisations with uh, good mahi, uh, good intentions, collectively working to try and do a little bit more in this space. And so we hope that you will be part of it and, and share it um, around anyone that might be interested. So that's all from me. And Jordan, anything else from you? No, that, that about wraps it up. I think that one thing that's just worth emphasising one more time is that if you report through Aotearoa Justice Watch, it doesn't mean that you can't also then report through the Prison Inspectorate, report through the IPCA, and use those other tools that we have at our disposal as well. It's not an it's not a um, exclusive option to report with us. Um, it just means that 
you are registering an experience or something that you've seen or know has happened with um, our repository, which is outside of the government, is in an external capacity. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think that's important as well. And I think I did say I was going to talk a little bit about disclaimers. This isn't about us being able to individually investigate your case or your situation. This is about providing us uh, and others in this space with more understanding of what's happening uh, so we can push for change uh, as and where it's needed. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, and kakite, and we'll see you soon. Kakite, no.